just dropped someone off at the airport and the airport was packed. The airport was packed. Parking was packed. People are, you know, doing what they need to do. However, this is really interesting. I noticed this when I had to have my car serviced and I had to take an Uber. And Uber prices are at an all-time high. And part of the reason is there are less Uber drivers on the road. Now, I wasn't taking a lot of Uber during the, um, the, the pandemic, but Uber drivers were eligible for the $600 bonus per week for unemployment. And I was starting to think, if you were an Uber driver living at home with mom and dad, you were balling out. You were getting $2,400 a month and not working. I want you to really, really think about that. Um, and also being an Uber driver, your risk is ex exponentially high because if you do 20, 25 trips per day, that's 20, 25 exposures. So I feel that this, 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 this is so strange, right? This is so strange what's going on that um, I don't know because I, I, I'm not aware, but I think that the Uber drivers get the $300 unemployment boost. I think they get that. Um, so that is part of the reason that I think there are less Uber drivers on the road. On the other hand, you would assume there would be more Uber drivers. I think a lot of people, whoa, are doing DoorDash or Uber Eats or uh, Instacart because it's less risky. You know, Instacart, you're just delivering groceries, right? So we're going to have this weird, strange economy for a minute. We're going to have this situation where people are not doing the things. I mean, we're, we're very much heading toward two societies, a socialist society in a capitalistic society, and they're gonna exist concurrently. So we're gonna have people who are gonna embrace the socialist model, give me money, take care of me, and we're gonna have a group of people who are gonna embrace the capitalist model, and the folks who are embracing the capitalist model, I feel are going to make so much money because we're, we're having a lot of people literally opt out of the system. Um, go ahead and give me a check. Take care of me. Um, provide for me. And I'm just going to sit at home with my children. I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to enjoy life. I'm going to Netflix and chill. Maybe smoke me a little weed. You know, and do these things. Whereas there's another group of people who, like me, um, essentially, I run high numbers and I need to run the low numbers. I ran the high numbers for the car business I want to start. And I'm going to run the low numbers today. But the numbers, I can get up to a million dollars in revenue within 24 months. Starting from scratch. Starting from scratch, I'm like, really? And, you know, essentially have a $12 million a year enterprise from nothing, right? From nothing. And essentially those who choose to embrace capitalism right now are going to enter into a field 
that is going to be, in my opinion, less congested. Because there's so many people who are opting out. Like, if I was an Uber driver, and I asked myself this question, if I was an Uber driver, if I was a person of low income, if I was a person who needed to get in my car and drive every day to make money, what would I have done during the pandemic? I would have taken a piece of plastic and walled off the rear of my car and I would have drove. I would have drove. Uh, essentially, the pandemic hasn't stopped me from going out. Uh, it hasn't really stopped me from traveling. It really hasn't stopped me from doing what I'm doing. It hasn't. So with me, all things being equal, with me being who I am, if I was a person that had to drive for Uber to make income, I would have drove during the pandemic. And also going ahead to my thesis that if you enter into entrepreneurship now, you're going to enter into a landscape with less people. Look at the Uber drivers. The Uber drivers, uh, well, part of this is, I don't know if business crashed. Let me go ahead and talk about the full scope of this. Because when everyone starts staying at home, it would be a natural assumption that Uber ridership would crash. And this may be the reason that a lot of Uber drivers are not on the road because it crashed. I mean, they were out and they were not getting rides. So they just like, hey, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to sit at home, get this unemployment. But now that things are opening back up and these Uber drivers have not returned, the Uber drivers who are out are making more money in the pandemic. The Uber drivers who are like, hey, I'm going to drive, I'm going to wear my mask, I'm going to have my disinfectant, my hand sanitizer, I'm going to do all this. They're making more money. They're making way more money because um, I'm dating someone who, who doesn't have a car. She gets around with Uber, right? And um, she has told me that there have been times that she's been somewhere and she's tried to leave and she could not leave because there were no cars. And I actually tested this on 10 different occasions. And depending on what time of day, there's essentially no cars. I have never seen that in the Uber app ever before. So um, essentially I was talking to her one day, texting her and I went into like, you know, just tried Uber, no cars. And then three hours later, um, one car. Then six hours later, no cars again. So if you're an Uber driver in Atlanta, you get on the road, you're gonna, your income is going to be dramatically higher than it was before the pandemic started. You know, and in time, this will even out because, you know, uh, Uber drivers will get the word that it's like, hey, man, I mean, literally, it is surging several times per day it is surging it is surging and it, it doesn't even tell you like you know it used to tell you it was surging like four or five x and stuff like that but um now it is it just shows you a high price it doesn't really give you all those details but i feel because so many people are sitting on the sidelines that this is the time to get into entrepreneurship. This is the time. Like recently, uh, one of my neighbors sold his house. And the house was on the market for over a year. It was on the market before COVID and it sold. And he had an estate sale for four days. And I don't know how he advertised because I'm not in that area. I don't look, but I know there was a sign at the beginning of the 
front of the subdivision literally 50 to 70 cars were at this estate sale I mean it, it was like you know I, I can't say it was annoying because it doesn't really happen that often but essentially you couldn't get in and out of the subdivision easily during the, when this estate sale was going on and that shows you that people are active people are active he just put a little sign at the front of the subdivision and 80, 50 to 80 cars well more than that because they were coming and going, coming and going but I, I one day I actually just counted how many cars were parked on the side of the street and it was like 50 and this was an ongoing thing so there was 50 people in there doing the state sales so that, that lets you know that garage sales are still doing well in the pandemic. If you were to have a garage sale and you were to put your stuff out there, you would get pe people, uh, people would be buying, people would come to your garage sale in the pandemic. They would come. So one of the things that you have to understand is for those who choose to participate in commerce is still active it's still active like um I, I'm, I'm like you know i'm kind of glad that i decided to do this car dealership because I, i'm facing some challenges uh, i'll talk about them in a separate video but essentially um it is reawakened something in me and i'm looking very much forward to starting it setting up an office and I'm going to rent an office first. I'm not going to get, you know, well, this depends. I'm still looking because I got an appointment today that uh, the, the LLC is set up. Uh, the day I get the business banking, uh, I'm on my way to the bank right now to deposit this check for um, 125000 to put it back into my um, holding company and then I'm going to pull this money out of my holding company uh, I'm going to tell you why if I were to just go ahead and deposit this check into my new Wells Fargo account I would not have access for the money for a week but since I already have a Wells Fargo account and I figured out a little hack I can deposit this money into my Chase account transfer this money from my Chase account to my Wells Fargo account and then pull the money out of Wells Fargo that way and I have instant the money because essentially um, I may buy a car today I might buy a car today I'm not really sure because uh, essentially I got to do some research because I don't want to buy 30 cars right and put them on my personal car insurance I'm like that would be let's see that that would my 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 car insurance would would I, I don't even know if that's possible you know I gotta do some research because there are car collectors who have 30 40 cars and I don't know if they're on one insurance I don't, I don't know I gotta I gotta actually um, talk to my state farm agent that's another call I need to make today but I might buy a car today. I might wait until next week to get that car. Uh, I don't know, because I found one. Because essentially, uh, like I said, I'll do it in the, the car video. I've done the math, so I can buy a car for $5,000 and then rent it for a year and have it pay for itself and then sell it. So I can do that. Um, so we will see. Um, we will see. But one of the things that I, I want you to understand is if you choose to start a business, I don't care if it's a restaurant, I don't care if it's um, a car wash, I don't I don't care what it is. You can get some some activity. You can get some juice going on with your business if you get it started. 
you can get this thing going. You know, it's just a matter of you saying, raising your paw and saying, hey, I am going to um, do this thing. I'm going to create this thing. I'm going to build this thing and I'm gonna make some money. If you raise your paw and say, I'm gonna do these things, there is money out here for you to get. There is money out here for you to put your paws on. There's money out here. There's a lot of money out here. There's a ton of money out here for those who are courageous enough to get active, to get started, to build, because let's go ahead and say unemployment is at 10%, right? Let's say it's at 10%. That means 90% of the people have their jobs. 90% of the people have their jobs. So there is money in the economy. There is money in the economy. People are doing things. People are going on vacation. People are buying houses. If they're buying houses, guess what else they're buying? They're buying appliances and they're buying furniture and they're buying uh, drapes and they're buying linens and they uh, are buying sheets and they're buying all of these things. Um, they're, they're buying these things. And this is, you know, you buy a house, you gotta get furniture, appliances, uh, linens, um, rugs. So this is stimulating the economy. So all these things are going down right now, right? And I'm telling you, you wanna start a business especially if you're in income zone number one, the danger zone, which is less than $50,000 a year, which is like 80% of America is in that danger zone. 80% of America is less than $50,000 a year, single person income. 80% of America's there. And you need to start a business, you need to start making money, you need to um, build, you need to create, you need to be a, a builder, you need to be an entrepreneur, you need to be a producer, you need to be a creator. A friend of mine who had this restaurant, and I didn't know it was like, you know, time passes by so quickly, uh, Le, Pe Le, 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 Le Petit Marche, it was a restaurant over in Kirkwood. Uh, I used to live in East Atlanta and I remember going in there and I said, why don't y'all serve breakfast? And that literally changed that whole restaurant. I don't really know what's going on because I'm not in that area, but her restaurant closed down. I don't know if this was during the COVID or whatever, but she was going to shut down and then she sold her restaurant to um, the guys who have the Atlanta Breakfast Club, which is a really hot restaurant. The Atlanta Breakfast Club is by the aquarium. And every time you go there, you've got these ridiculously long waits. And I don't know why she's shutting down because, you know, as I alluded to in another video, you've got people who are literally begging for employees, restaurants, and you got restaurants that are shutting down. It is a really strange economy. But I feel, and this is where the socialism comes in, because right now I know that additional $300 on top of your unemployment benefits. I don't know what unemployment, I think unemployment benefits in Georgia are like 300 a week. So if you're getting 600 a week, $1,200 every two weeks, $2,400 a month, you're getting what you would get if you were making $30,000 a year. Actually, you're getting more. You're getting more because if you were making $30,000 $30, a year, you would only be getting um, $2,000. And with unemployment, you're getting an additional $400. So you're getting more money 
you're getting more money with this whole deal. You're getting more money with unemployment. And I'm, I'm actually thinking when it was $600, people were getting crazy money. Because if you were getting that 2,600, like in Georgia, I think it's three, I don't know what it is, 300 bucks uh, a, a week. So if you were getting 1,200 plus 20, you were getting $3,800 a month. That would be the equivalent of $50,000 a year. So many people got a raise, a temporary raise, when unemployment was like that. Many people got a raise. A raise, I'm telling you, it is um, insane that people got a raise on unemployment. And this is the thing that I think that is going to urge socialism into the marketplace. I feel that we're moving very rapidly towards socialism in a wanted and desired level of socialism. I think that's where we're moving because so many people, because like, like my old saying, luxuries once tasted become necessities, right? So you got people who are going to get accustomed to staying at home and getting a check. They're going to be accustomed to it. And if the Democrats make this promise that we're going to do this for you, they will be voted back in. They, they will have, if they're like, hey, if you vote us back in, we're going to create this socialist agenda. We're going to cut these checks because this thing that's going on with parents with children, I think that is just a form of universal basic income. I think that is the first um, bullet fired in the social, the socialist agenda. Because if you've got parents getting like, I, 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 I haven't researched it, but I think it's like $3,500 per child um, or something like that. I, I'll have to do some more research on it because there's so many socialist programs that are out there right now. There, there, there's like a ton of socialist programs out there. There's a ton of programs out there where you can um, get some money. There's so many of them, right? There's so many of them. And one of the things that is happening with the socialist agenda is, because I, I need to put this guy's um, YouTube channel, because he talks about how, you know, when I was a kid, every kite season, everyone would get a kite. That isn't happening. We've moved away from so many little activities and hobbies that used to be abundant um, and he talks about this with the, the people who are 35 years and under how they are living and this, this very much dovetails into the socialist agenda if you don't have a passion you don't have something that you're striving to do you're not trying to build or create you're just existing what's the best thing for you? a check Getting a check. Just getting a check, sitting at home, getting a check. That is a crazy, crazy thing for you. And a lot of people are there. They don't have a business. They don't have uh, an agenda. They're not working on anything. So it makes sense to, like, hey, if I can sit at home and chill and get a check, and I, I, I feel that this check is going to be about 
$2,000 a month. I feel, because essentially, 70% of America only makes like, you know, 80% of America makes 30, so $2,000 a month is the equivalent of 30,000. They were getting by on the 30,000, so they can get by on the 2,000. Easy, easy. And essentially, you, you gotta, you, you, you have a choice. You can uh, be on this socialist agenda and be living on peanuts, be living a hand-to-mouth ex existence, or you could start an enterprise and be living large. I, I really feel that we're gonna have two classes of citizens. We're gonna have the people who are going to embrace the socialist agenda, and we're gonna have people who are gonna be out here killing dragons, building businesses, serving people, creating economies, creating uh, their own economies. And it, it is wild what is happening. It is wild what is going on. And I feel this year is gonna be a weird thing for the economy. It's gonna be very, very weird. Like in my video, the repo man got canceled. The foreclosure man got canceled. So we're living in an economy where real market forces are not at play. Because if real market forces were at play, because essentially um, there are three million, let's go ahead and say there's eight million people in a foreclosure status, a pre-foreclosure status. I mean, they haven't paid their mortgage in months. And if we were foreclosing, instead of there would be in like 1 million homes on the market for sale, there would be 9 million, 9 million. And this would dramatically depress the prices of homes. If we had nine times the inventory that we do now, you would not see these home prices spiking. You would not see these bidding wars. You wouldn't see any of this. You wouldn't see none of this. But because the economy is in an artificial state of sus uh, suspended animation, you know, real market force, the repo, you know, that, that really surprised me when I heard all these dealers talk about there were less repos at the auction. And I was like, less repos? And I was like, what do you mean less repos? And it's like the repo man, a lot of banks are not repoing cars. And this actually reduces the inventory at auction, which pushes up the price. And I was just sitting there. So if you if you were to actually, if real marketplace real marketplace forces, if real market forces were in play, um, car prices would be cheap because we have a lot of repos. Home prices would be cheap because we have a lot of foreclosures. But since these two things are not happening the way that they normally would, this has created a very weird and strange economy that I feel is going to go on this whole year. Because like with COVID, I feel that, you know, America, like I, I predicted this in my live streams that America was going to have the highest COVID infection rate because that's just who we are. You can't tell me what to do. Don't tread on me. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm an American, right? But also, I knew that once we got the vaccine, that most Americans would take it and our COVID rate, it will start going down. It's anticipated that because so many people are getting vaccinated, and I know two people who got vaccinated who got COVID and one was sick for two days and the other one, she didn't even exhibit any symptoms. <laughs> and, you know, she's like, man, I'm so glad I took that shot because she got fully vaccinated. So uh, one of the things that uh, the people who get COVID after being vaccinated, 30% of them don't even show any symptoms. So once we like, um, once we get to like 150 million people vaccinated, we're gonna see the COVID rate in this country crash and we're gonna see America returning. Like, I really feel 
that by Christmas, America's gonna be 80, 80, 80% 80 back to normal in terms of commerce, people going, traveling and doing stuff. And But here's the thing, we don't share this planet by ourselves. You know, there's, there's more in America. And right now, what is going on in India is heartbreaking. They're running out of oxygen. They are literally having people die in waiting rooms. So, even though we will get it together, the rest of the world, like in Europe, they're shutting down. They're shutting down again. And we, we got to share this planet with other people. And I have a, a feeling there's going to be more COVID variants that... You know, we're going to be dealing with this probably to 2030. <laughs> I mean, this, this is not going to just go away. Um, it's been put out that, you know, you're going to have to get a booster shot once a year, even if you get vaccinated. Um, I feel that this is going to be really interesting. And I'm going to be one of those people. You know, there's some people that feel like I took an L because I, I did the video talking about I got vaccinated. I am 54 years old. I had a heart attack. I have underlying symptoms. I am not going to let some internet bullies who are young, who if they get it, more than likely they're not going to die, bully me into not getting the, the vaccine. Because, you know, the person who said I took an L, I, I, I think that's very funny because essentially it's become a political talking point what's going on with COVID. And you got people who are politicized this and they're like, hey, you know, it, it's like one thing if you just like, hey, I ain't taking the vaccine because it's unproven, I don't know. Um, and also there's a thing where women who want to have children who never had children, they're told not to get the vaccine. Um, so it's kind of interesting. But I feel that most of the people in America are going to get the vaccine and we're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see a lot of stuff that goes on. But expect more weird economy videos because this is a very strange, weird economy right now. It is not behaving like it should. But with that... Is opportunity. It's opportunity. Like this this whole thing with Dodge Doge coin. It ain't even real. And it's making people money. It's crazy. So that's all I got for you guys. If you want to become part of the corporate citizens, if you want to get your game together, go below. The price isn't going up until May. And I want more people to be able to access this and get into becoming a business owner. I am running a real life experiment of starting a business from scratch that I've never started before. I don't know nothing about. And it is my goal to turn this into a million dollar business within two years. Two years. So we will see. So that's all I got for you guys. Go below and I'll talk to you later.